G'day folks and welcome to the Encounters Down Under podcast. I'm your host Anthony Goodall and I invite guests to the show to share their amazing encounters with aliens and UFOs. If you or someone you know has had an encounter down under or anywhere in the world for our new segment Encounters Unbound, please get in touch with me via the Encounters Down Under Facebook page or email at australianufosightings at outlook.com.au. Be sure to join the Encounters Down Under Facebook page and YouTube channel where you can also get involved during the live stream interviews, sharing your thoughts and opinions during the live show. Also, if you enjoyed the podcast, don't forget to give us a rating and review on your favorite listening platform. But anyway, that's enough from me. Let's get into what you've been waiting for. Kick back and relax with your favorite beverage and enjoy the show. G'day folks and welcome to another episode of Encounters Down Under. Kelly joins us on this episode who had an amazing encounter with a strange translucent object that could have been a craft or an organic entity defying the laws of nature as we know it. So please welcome to the show, Kelly. G'day Kelly, welcome to the show. Hi. Thanks for joining me, it's absolutely Hi. fantastic having you on. No worries. I'm a bit <laughs> nervous, good. but... Ah, it's understandable. Look, it's it's one of those topics that it is a bit nerve-wracking, and of course coming onto a podcast and talking about it openly to potentially thousands of people it's sort of it it is a bit of a nerve-wracking experience in itself but um obviously nothing more nerve-wracking than the encounters that you experience yourself um from what i've what you told me there is uh, you have these incredible experiences and i'd love for you to go and tell me about them so yeah i'll let you go and take the wheel uh yeah no worries uh so the main one was uh back in about march 2016 um I think you read the uh, the description of it. It was absolutely incredible, like nothing I could have ever imagined even. Uh, I basically, so that morning I'd watched uh, some videos on YouTube about UFOs and um, this one was saying how there's like a, a psychic connection to them that they, you know, you can basically summon them and I was like oh that's funny but okay and I'd I'd set up my my video camera to film the moon and I was just sitting there going okay well I'm here show yourselves and you know not really expecting anything to happen um if anything I was expecting maybe some orbs because I'd, I'd seen a lot of orbs before um and then the next thing, so so the house we were living in at the time, it was a double story and it was on a hill and uh, it was near Fremantle, but you could see all the way to Perth International Airport. Um, and I was, as I was like filming the moon, which was off to the side and up, um, I was watching the airport and I was watching this uh, plane coming into land. And the next thing I saw this object appear just like out of nowhere above this plane uh like so it was really tiny because the airport was about well more than 30 kilometers away um and I couldn't really quite make out what it was but I was watching it and it's it started coming towards me like really quickly uh like if you've ever looked through a camera with a really good zoom lens when you twist the zoom lens and it zooms in, like, that's how quickly this thing came towards me. Um, later on, I, I did some rough calculations and it was moving at basically several thousand kilometres an hour. Um, so when it first came into sight, it was like, you know, like a fraction of the size of my pinky fingernail held at arm's length. And by the time it got level with the house, it was about the size of a small car, like a a Volkswagen Beetle or something like that. Um, And I couldn't really tell, like I couldn't tell what it was. It it seemed to be made out of balls of light. Uh, It made absolutely no sound. It was a, a dead quiet night. I could hear the cars on the road further away than what this object was. Um, and I couldn't even hear it, like the friction of the air as it moved through the air. There was just absolutely no sound. Um, it slowed down as it came past me and it seemed to be, it was almost like it was moving like a living creature. Like, uh, if you can imagine, um, 
a microscopic organism moving through liquid, like it, you know, undulates through the liquid and it, it, that, that's what it was like. It was like it had like a almost like a nose or something and it was, you know, going like this and seeking stuff out and it kind of turned to look at me and it was just it was just so weird. Uh, and I was like I was really excited and a little bit scared and I was trying to get the camera off the tripod because I wanted to film this thing because I knew nobody was ever going to believe me. And um, I was fumbling and stuff and it kind of slowed down and I was overcome with this like benign sense of amusement and uh, I finally managed to get the tripod off the camera, uh, the, sorry, the camera off the tripod and by that time it was moving sort of past the house and I couldn't see it through that window anymore. So I've run to the other bedroom and uh, got the window open and finally got it in the viewfinder and the camera just turned off. And I was like, what? Because the, the camera was fully charged. It usually had like an hour and a half of time on the battery and I'd only been filming for about half an hour and it's like it just turned off. I was like, no. <laughs> um, but I did manage to catch a few frames of it. Um, I think you've seen them and my artistic impressions of of what it actually looked like because you couldn't really see in in the uh in the video frames um then as soon as as soon as i got it into the viewfinder it sped off again and out over the ocean and then up into the air um where orion was a little bit above the horizon and seemed to kind of look at the the star sirius and then it just vanished just split second just it was just gone and yeah and that was it i just sat there stunned just going what just happened it was uh it was incredible yeah it's not the first time oh. i've heard these strange objects flying in the sky like these uh i don't know if you've heard like translucent jellyfish going along and stuff like that, with, like little balls of light inside yep. them and that and i'm sort of getting the impression there's yep. something similar to that sort of concept and it just makes you wonder like what uh, are these yeah. things yeah, um, and it, it was it was so surreal. Like, even though the balls of light that made up this creature, I mean, they can't describe them as anything other than balls of light, but they weren't actually all that bright. Um, so I've seen, like, I've seen other orbs, um, especially in about the year after that, because after that, I, I was just, I was up there all the time looking out, waiting to see another one. And uh, I never saw anything like that, but I saw these blue orbs that used to, like, I'd be up there and I'd see one. And it was usually when there was clouds in the sky and they'd be like above the cloud line. And the next thing there'd be all these, like, there'd be like five or six aircraft heading towards it, like converging on that spot and it would disappear. And then, and I, I had my son with me and, and uh, he'd run around looking for, you know, looking for where it went. And it would appear like on the other side of the sky and all the aircraft would turn around and start heading in that direction as well. Um, but but those blue orbs were nothing like this. Like they were quite bright. Um, you could even see them as they went behind the clouds. You could see the, you know, the glow through the clouds a little bit. Uh, but this thing, yeah, it was just... I, I can't imagine that it was a, a craft of any kind. It was, it, it was too fluid-like in motion. It seemed more like a, a living creature, but how you can get a living creature made of balls of light is beyond me. I can't understand that part of it. <laughs> yeah, that raises the but, yeah, question, like I was saying, like the jellyfish thing there, or whatever this, like maybe like, uh, was it sort of like a, a, a worm kind of looking thing with the lights inside um, it or more shape to it? No. No, that I couldn't make out anything except the balls of light. There was like no other detail, and it's not that it was too far away. I mean, it was quite close. It couldn't have been more than about two hundred meters away, and about one hundred and fifty meters up in the air. Um, but yeah, I just I couldn't see anything other than these balls of light, uh, and it was weird because the balls of light seemed to change size as they moved along it like as it moved the balls of light would like run along it yeah okay. um and the faster the object moved the faster the balls of light would move 
Um, but then up around the nose, they'd go really small. So, it, yeah, I, it, the more I thought about it, the more confused I'd get. But, uh, <laughs> but it was a pretty humbling experience. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've always... I've always kind of been a believer since I was a kid. Um, like I saw, I grew up in Africa and I saw some orbs out over the ocean uh, where there shouldn't have been any planes because there was no flight pl- flight paths out there. Um, and they would just, you know, hang on the horizon and then just disappear. Um, and like I've always been a science fiction fan, so... You know, I've always, and, and I love astronomy, uh, so I've, I've always been looking up and, um, yeah, that's, I guess that's why I was watching those videos that morning and why I thought I'll, I'll stick a camera up and see what happens. But, but yeah, I've never seen anything else like it since. Um, yeah, no, look, that's incredible. Like, so how far away do you think these orbs of light were between each other? Like, were they fairly spaced out or do they seem like they're... they were, like, touching each other. They weren't touching so, each other? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can pull up an image of the uh, Fucking the description that I sent you. Yeah, which I'll throw that on the, uh, the YouTube channel when I do the editing of this thing. I'll throw it through there so people can actually see what you're talking about. Um, yeah. If I can... But yeah, just looking at it now, um, so you're like you in the shape of like the what you described is like it's sort of a bit like a wormish kind of shape to it, from what you've yeah. described in your artistic and, and the way your, it moves. Yeah. So like, yeah. was that how many sort of uh, orbs there was inside the actual thing, or we is this like as it's traveling along kind of thing, like with the number no, of uh, that, orbs? That, yeah, no, that's pretty much what it looked like as it was traveling along, but. But the lights would be moving along it. Okay, so the sort of um, pulsing as it yeah goes along its path. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because that's incredible. So um, I'm just going through the, where the actual camera images itself. There, like, I could see there's probably a little bit of shutter speed playing effect here. Yeah. Um. So, like, yeah, so how big pulsing. do you think the actual object was? So, um. To a rough oh, estimate, you said a bit of a wagon, a bit of car, yeah, yeah sorry, size small car, yeah. So th- that's actually pretty incredible. Like, I, I, obviously, we can't do much of that. Obviously, night photography is horrible in itself, um, especially when trying yeah. to catch something on the, on the in the moment. So, but like, you've done an incredible job here, I, I feel. And it's what is that one there? What's going on there? So, what's happened here? Um, you've gotten one of these images here where you got the Blue orbs sort of scattered everywhere with a couple of little blue uh, red orbs here and there. If I can try and get this um, quickly through here on so you can actually see what I'm looking at, um, which would be a lot better. Just give us a second. I'm going to do a bit of tinkering here. Um, bring that up there. And let's see if I can get you to. Uh, I'm still getting used to this. Uh, this, to using this uh, one here. So if I can get that up there. I can get that full screen. I'm not just save the image bugger it. We'll do it like that. And oh hang on, I think what's happened here could be like the uh digital sort of effects here where you uh <clears throat> well, I can't remember what they call it now, but you got the the pixelation of the digital pixelations. Yep. Um and plus, because it's between moving. the red and the blues, and yeah, sorry, yeah, and because it was moving as well, and because it was a poor, yeah. poor quality camera, so no, that's fine. Um, so the image um, in Photoshop more like to try and convey what I could see with my eyes, which was very yeah. different to what the camera captured. Yeah. No, it's understandable because, as I was saying, like, you know, it is hard to do night photography, and a lot of people don't understand the difficulty of night photography itself. And any sort of yeah. slight movement of the camera is going to create like a, a shutter speed effect where it's going to el- elongate images and distort it to the buggery. Um, yeah, exactly. This. So, between the object moving and me moving the camera, trying to get it into the viewfinder, yeah, I, I think I captured like, I think it was like five 
actual frames of video and in each one they're just all blurry and moving. But That's um uh, it's something I'm not crazy because because I did catch something <laughs> on the camera. <laughs> yeah, no, you look you definitely got something. And like you definitely can't rule it into being like a uh, a plane because of, with navigation lights because obviously um, I've never seen a plane have blue in the center of it to say the least. Yeah, um, and it wasn't a drone. Much. I've seen I've seen loads of drones uh, at night and during the day. Um, I've seen drones with similar coloured, you know, lights on 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 them. That it, but it's just it was nothing like that. And, you know, unless there's a drone out there that's the size of a car that doesn't make any sound, then uh, then I don't think it was a drone. Yeah, so all right, I've should be able to see your screen here. Should be able to see the screen. I've got the images up there now. So um, um, I think it was this one here I was referring to. So you've got the blue streak coming across. Yeah. And then you've got obviously the little red orbs here. Like, is this part of the actual... Object itself, or what's happened here? If you have that, an idea, that's more just because I was because I was moving. Um, yep. so there's another one. Uh, I think if you go back a, a back a couple of shots, that that one there. Yep, yeah, that's that's the most realistic uh, frame of what I saw. Yep. Um, you see how it's like. Moving on a curve. That's that's how yep. it was going up and down like a like something moving through water almost. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Any idea? Uh, this is like a street light, maybe, or I think, yeah, I think that was a street light in the distance. Okay. No, that's incredible. Uh, like, so for people who um, are listening through the actual audio version only, so we'll um, probably the best bet to go and look, look at our YouTube channel there, guys, and um, have a look. Um, and you'll see the bit of a, I got a, the green top with a blue center and red on the bottom side. And if you can imagine, yep. it's like a bit of a worm with a, you know, with the edges, one side's green, one side's red, and with a blue center being its, yeah, center worm. Yep. <laughs> That's the best I can sort of describe it for the uh, those listening on the audio. But um, so the colors change a little bit here. That could be just a bit of a, oh, you said you did a bit of Photoshop, didn't you? Uh, no, not on that. That's just a pure screenshot, no Photoshop or anything. It's just uh, it's just a single video frame. Uh, the only, the first couple of images, um, those are the ones I just created them on on Photoshop just to try and yeah. uh, better show the shape of the object and how it kind of narrowed at the front like a nose. Yeah, okay, uh, yeah that's okay. also that's also just a a video frame. So you actually have the video footage of this, is that right? Uh, yeah. Is there any chance you could um, send that to me there and I could try and throw it up if, if you're okay with that? Uh, yeah, sure. It's, on, it's also on that Facebook page. Um, oh, it's actually on there as well. I, I, just, I wrote up. it right down because it, it's literally only in the in the frame in the video frame for like a second. Uh, not even a second. I mean, there's there's only like a, I took it into a video editor, and I, there was literally five frames that there was anything in in the shot. Uh, yeah, okay. Before then, it's just basically you know, staring at the moon. It's just the camera staring at the moon. Yeah, um, I can't see and the, then, uh, the video file there anyway, but um, it's all right. We'll work with it later. Yep. Okay. Well, when we're done here, I'll send you the link to the video. Yeah, that's fine. That'll be great. Um, so where are we back here? So yeah, um, so yeah. If, um, for those watching the YouTube's there, like obviously all the pixelations are here are from the digital um, camera watch working with night vision. Um, so this is a digital sort of glitch, I suppose you'd call it. Um, yeah. The uh, what was it software errors? Like that. It's, it's something that you'll find classic on the um, if you're watching the space station live footage. This is something you'll see see quite common there, where you're watching the on the dark side of the uh, the planet. Um, going through that yep. there, um, because yeah, people confuse these as like um, you know, they'll be, they'll be watching the, the space station footage there and go, oh, what's all these things here? You know, it's all it could be all stars or something, you know, or UFOs and whatnot, yep. um, which is not. But, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I'm going off topic here. But <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, look, it's it's absolutely incredible. It's um something that I 
can't even quite understand. Like, like I said, like you can rule out a plane because I've never seen a plane with a, a um a blue center. So it's confusing. Yeah. And the fact that you're saying like this thing move incredibly across the sky, defying any known possible logic or capabilities of our own technology, you know, it's yeah, it's incredible. I've had, I've had some skeptics. I had one guy say to me that um, somebody was towing a kite out of a car window with the LED lights on it, and I'm like I was just like, "What? Like unless unless that car, you know, didn't have to follow any roads, just went straight over land and was able to travel, you know, at roughly." several thousand kilometres an hour, I'm pretty sure it wasn't a car towing a kite out of its window. Yeah. Oh, look, look I can understand his perspective. Like, it can look like a, a kite with the LED lights on it, but, like, your explanation to saying yeah, where it's come from and its speed, it sort of, like, rules that one out as its explanation. Like, I'm, I'm yeah. quite sceptical on a lot of things. I don't like the word sceptical. I'm, I'm critical on a lot of things. Um, yeah. Trying to give an explanation to it and... The way you've explained it, the captures you've done, like it, it I, I can't explain it to be honest. It, it's one of those things like yeah. whatever the hell it is, is going to be the big question overall. Yeah. So it, it's, uh, yeah. it's absolutely amazing. Um, because like I said, like, you know, I've heard stories there of people seeing translucent sort of creatures, I suppose you call it jellyfish or something of that nature, or some like uh, they look like balloons, yep. like translucent balloons, even. Yeah, uh, yeah, this was these... translucent. You couldn't see through it at all. Um, yeah. And like I said, the the light was strange because it wasn't very bright. It was, you know, I mean, it was it was bright enough that you could see it against the dark sky, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like party lights or or any kind of other lights that you'd you'd normally see. It was. It was like a really muted kind of light. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did, did you happen to take note of the time at all, and like to sort of like see if there were any possible missing time during that experience? Yeah. No, there was no missing time. Um, and it's it's funny because just as I saw it, uh, my kid was calling out from downstairs. You know, oh, mum, uh, what's for dinner? Because I'd forgotten about dinner as I was doing this. And it, so it was like nine, nine o'clock was school holidays. And uh, yeah, he's call he's calling out for, you know, what are we doing for dinner? And I'm trying to answer him while I'm trying to get the, the camera off the tripod. And yeah, it was, it was all funny. <laughs> <laughs> the whole situation just went to chaos all of a sudden. Yeah, it was. Yep. <laughs> the dog's barking in the background and, there was a party That's going amazing. on next door as well, and I was like, "Why isn't Why isn't anybody else seeing this?" <laughs> yeah, that's the weird thing too. Like, you know, something that's so well you think would be obvious, but yet no one else is seeing this. Yeah. And um, like, did you yeah. happen to see through like social medias at all? If like, if anyone else had seen something similar in that area at the same yeah, time? I have searched for for what seven years now. I've tried every search phrase that I can think of to try and find anything even remotely similar and I've never seen anything I, I just can't find and it's frustrating you know because some of the videos that people post it's like clearly that's Venus dude you know you, you know or, yeah. or or there's a plane going past and they're like oh you know I can't hear it and it's like yeah but you don't hear planes when they first go past you hear the plane after the plane has gone past that's right. and you know so it, it's no wonder that there's so much stigma out there. Um, yeah. But like I said, I've I've been looking up since I was a kid. I've seen so many satellites and, you know, you can tell the difference between normal satellites and the International Space Station, for, for instance. Um, I used to have a really big telescope. I've seen Jupiter and the Galilean moons, uh, like, right there in front of me, like you could just reach out and touch them um, or pluck them out of the sky, you know. Uh, and, yeah, I used to like to go and uh, to the airport and, like, watch the planes come in right, you know, right near the run runway so they come over you. And, yeah, uh, I've done a lot of flying as well uh, through my life overseas and, and around Australia. I've been in helicopters. 
Um, and yet there's just, there's just nothing that I can compare it to what I saw. I can't even, I can't even, uh, think of anything in the hundreds of sci-fi movies that I've seen that would, that would, uh, even remotely be comparable. Yes, yeah, so that's it's the thing. Like, you, like you, you explain like saying like you, you've got a lot of knowledge behind you, a bit of experience there to sort of try and even remotely try and challenge what this could have been. And yeah. again, you're like, you're still stumped on the possibility. Yeah, and like I, st- I can't even figure out if it was a craft or a creature, or like the the best I can come up with is that maybe it was some kind of interdimensional being or um. If it was if it was man made, then maybe some kind of a holographic projection. Uh, but yeah, but that sort of stuff is is beyond me. Yeah, but to even go for a holographic projection, like you you explained that it had like some sort of like intellect to it, like you know, sort of consciousness has it slowed down to look at you. Well, that's what you felt it looked yeah, like it was it, doing. It, it, and I it's, feel it's like if it was a holographic, on. it wouldn't do that. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know how they could get a, hel- a hologram to to move from near the international airport to out over the ocean. It's yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's one of those things, isn't it? And yeah, like you said before, I always one of the questions I'm going to raise before. Like, do you think there is some sort of interdimensional or dimensional sort of creature or being of that some sort of nature, uh, which is a strong possibility because. We're not seeing these things a lot, but there have been sightings of explaining these weird, strange things flying in the sky that have like a, like you're saying, like an uh, insect or some sort of animalistic sort of nature to them. Yeah. So it's, where do you go with it? It's, it's one of those things. I know, I know. I, uh, like I'm, I'm a member of all the UFO groups and I'm always, always looking and, like I said, I've I've searched every search phrase that I can think of on on YouTube and Google, trying to find anything remotely similar. And and I've also done the whole thing of you know sitting there with the camera, saying, okay, well, show yourself to me. I'm 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 waiting, but it's never it's never shown itself again. Uh, I've got I've got a mate who's a a real skeptic. Um, and we go marining every marin season, and uh, we were sitting there waiting for, for you know, net pulling time. And uh, I did a little thought experiment. I, I sat there and I and I was like, okay, I've got a skeptic mate here. Come on, show yourself. And uh, it was funny because this this well, it looked no different to any other star. Right, it just it was like it was a totally clear night, and and this star just appeared, and uh, about fifteen seconds later, it disappeared. And I was like, "Oh, hey, Gary, look at this!" And he's he's looked, and just as he's looked, it's like just turned on again. And uh, I mean, it didn't move, and it did this for about twenty minutes, um, just you know, turning on for about. 15 seconds and then turning off, but it didn't move from its spate, from its spot in the sky. So it couldn't have been a satellite. It couldn't have been a plane. Um, but yeah, but it was nothing. It was nothing spectacular. Like, like this thing that I saw was, and I was like, Oh, maybe they didn't want to blow his mind too much. Maybe they just wanted to ease him into it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like how long um, was the light actually staying on for? Or was it like a, a flash kind of thing? No, it was so it would just come on and would just look like a star and it would stay on for about 15 seconds and then it would turn off, like just disappear. And it's not like the other stars around it would disappear. They were all still there. So it was, you know, and, yeah, and that baffled him. I mean, he's a a pretty smart guy. He's got a strong grasp on uh, quantum physics because he does telecommunications and has to deal with light photons and stuff like that and, yeah, well. Um yeah, he was baffled. Uh but yeah, next next Marin season I'll I'll try it out on him again. I'll see if it can <laughs> come on blow hopefully, um, time. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully yeah. give him something a bit more uh, obvious, you know, like something that's like we can't yeah. really something that, that's phenomenal, I should say. But it's <laughs> it's funny because uh just that one experience has 
seems to have changed his um, uh, his perception of the whole thing. Like before, before he saw that that light turning on and off in the sky. Whenever I tried to tell him about my UFO experience, it was you know ball lightning or uh, you know me hallucinating or <laughs> all these other things. And now it's like now he's like, oh, I I can't I can't figure out what you saw. I I can't you know. It, may, it makes no sense, whereas before it was like he was just not receptive to the idea at all. So, yeah, yeah, it's interesting that's how that works. That's the hard thing too. Yeah, like that's the hard thing too. Like a lot of people who haven't had an experience there, they don't believe in something like this. And then all of a sudden they yeah. have a, something that sort of defies their own known logic and they're like, okay, this. But now I'm questioning reality. Like what the hell is going on around us? And the, the next minute they want to yeah. get right into it and even – I love that. Like, you know, for me, like, it's sad that like, it has to get to that point, but it's still, I love it though, because like, they've actually shown some sort of evidence in their own spectrums that go and sort of blow their mind and go, okay, I need to start questioning things more, you know? And that's yeah. the part I love about this whole topic, you know, because people have had incredible experiences there and some not as phenomenal as others, but, you know, there's still so much to question this topic and there's so much more to go through. And yeah, for me, like, I want to show these. I want to go on, go on and call skeptics, but, but you know, the, the non believers. And I want to show them the proof. I want to give them the evidence, like, you know, these things are happening around you. Like, stop say, stop denying. Okay, yeah, there's no real yep. hard evidence of it. But these people are having experience of something that's denying our known logic or our own capabilities of technology. There's some strange yeah. universe out there that we don't understand. Yep. So. Yeah, to me, that's well, the, that's why I love all these Chinese, this Chinese balloon stuff. Oh, that's been driving me insane. Because now everybody's like, oh, well, so all UFOs are Chinese spy balloons. It's like, no, dude, yeah. no. Yeah. And, and that's a pretty good little tactic there, to be honest. Uh, like, you know, because the past, uh, what is it, six years we've been going on now, uh, like, you know, the, the US government, they're admitting to there's some sort of UAP, some sort of phenomena that they don't understand. And now yep. these Chinese balloons came into it and they've turned around and gone, well, these are UAPs of some sort. And it's like, well, they're not UAPs because they're not doing anything phenomenal. There's nothing that's yeah. even the nature of the, a phenomenon to be even called a UAP. They're just stationary yeah. thing. As that you've hit, hit up on the radar, you've had a Chinese yeah. space, or a Chinese balloon that you think is spying on you and you've gotten paranoid and just started shooting whatever the crap out of the sky that you think might be a spy balloon. <laughs> There's yeah. nothing even, even related to the UAP nature so yeah. it's like well so now they've sort of ruined the UAP topic again yeah uh so do you follow ross coulthard a little bit yeah yep when i can yeah his uh his uh podcast on the uh on the chinese spy balloon thing was was pretty good it was pretty funny he was getting fr pretty frustrated but um he had some pretty good insights like you know the whole like there seems to be something going on between uh, the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Air Force. Um, so yeah, it's been pretty interesting to follow all that. Yeah, and, I haven't kept uh, up much with the um, podcast at the moment. But I've, I've got to catch up back on them, but I understand where you're getting from. Like you know, there's a bit of a um, oh, what was your what was your like, call? Like yeah, there's a bit of a Air Force up and the Navy trying to say, hey, no, there's something going on here that. You know, we need to figure yeah. out. Yeah, like they're not they're not on the same path here. Like they're something that's supposed to be like an alliance between their own military. You know, <laughs> they they seem to be on opposite ends. Yeah, exactly. And uh, with some of the uh, some of the declassified documents that's been coming out, it's like it seems to be that the Air Force has kind of you know. Uh, gone into cahoots with private enterprise and uh yeah this breakthrough technology that they're trying to keep secret whereas the u.s the u.s navy is kind of you know aware of of something else that's going on and trying to expose that so yeah. it's it's in, be, be interesting to see where it goes um yeah, the part that annoys me though is like it's everything's getting controlled from the US military in regards to anything that's on this phenomena. And 
Yeah. The, the rest of the world just doesn't seem to want to care or even have their own input. It's just America's like, shut up. We're dealing with this. You don't mention a damn thing. Um, you keep your yeah. heads in the sand. When someone asks you, what you what's going on, you say, I don't know. Don't know. I've got no idea. Even though, of course, they would know. But Australia, yeah. for example, like, you know, we've got our own things that happen in our own skies, you know. People are seeing weird things there. And even the way that the that America mentioned that they they had talked to their allies in regards to this phenomenon, yet Australia goes, oh, we've got no idea. We've got, we've got nothing on this. We haven't been told anything. But yet America's admitting they're talking to their allies. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I've got some friends who are uh, in some higher places and uh, apparently the conversation on, you know, on the news and all that is very different to the conversations in the halls of power. Um, from what I can tell, it was leading towards, you know, okay, we need to kind of, you know, do a disclosure thing to, to the Australian public. But now that China is um, on a war footing and we're having to get our own war footing, it's kind of been put on the back burner. Yeah. Uh, so that's a bit of a bummer, but, yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. interesting how it's all playing out, though. It is, it is, and I hope like obviously we don't want war. It's something that's going to be horrible in the end. Like it's, uh, it's going to be inevitable there one day. We, we can't deny that some sort of World War Three is going to happen, but hopefully not in yep. our lifetime, and <laughs> hopefully like way in the future. So it's like, you know, where we can sort of get away from the planet because it's going to get blown to smithereens as it is. You know, once. These nukes get launched, we're buggered. Um, so hopefully, it's well, in the, in the, that in the future. Happen. I mean, if you follow, if you follow, like you know, UFO culture and history, uh, you know all the stories about um, UFOs near nuclear bases that have taken control, like taken nuclear missiles and warheads offline and stuff like that. It's like, yeah. I mean. It's hard hard for us mere mortals to know whether all that stuff's true, but there seems to be a pretty consistent theme, and not only just from the US. This seems to be, you know, a consistent theme through Britain and Russia as well, as well as the US. Yeah. Uh, these things that have happened, um, and I know uh, when I was growing up in South Africa, there was there was something happening uh, there too, not with nuclear uh, missiles or whatever, we didn't have nuclear capabilities, but uh, I know the Air Force got involved in, in something that had, that had come down uh, in the desert somewhere there. So, But that yeah. was all hushed up as well. Yeah, there was also the one with a school sighting and they had a visit or something like that. But, uh, um, yeah, in Zimbabwe. Yep. Yeah, yes, that was after yep. I left Africa. Um, but uh, that, that story is fascinating, especially... Um, so they've done like a follow-up documentary to it now, uh, okay. like twenty years later, you know, and, and all the kids that saw these these beings, they're now adults, and um, it's really left a mark on them. Like they've they haven't been traumatized by by the actual experience they had. They've been traumatized by the interference afterwards of being told, you know, that they were crazy or that they were liars or. Um, you know, that they needed to stop talking about it and all that. And it's like 20 years later and they've really got a lot of mental stuff still going on. Um, and there's a, a professor at Harvard um, or Oxford, I can't remember, uh, but he's basically the chair of psychiatry and he's taken them all on. And uh, he's, you know, he used to be a sceptic and now he's like a full-on full believer because – you know, all all these kids that saw it, all this is all their stories have remained so consistent, and uh, the life troubles that they've had is so consistent with trauma survivors who've not been believed about, you know, their allegations or whatever. And um, yeah, so this documentary that I saw it interviewed the parents of the children as well, and uh, and the teacher, and yeah, it was all. You can't. You have to believe them. You, you know, they're too. Uh, having experienced my own trauma, I can really identify with the feelings. Uh, you know, of not being believed and being told that you need to be quiet about something, and 
yeah, it's it's all it 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 messes with your mind more than the original experience. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. The biggest question I have on that though, like, um, well, like, why visit such a remote location and like school kids at that to go and sort of give this message of like, you know, you're ruling the planet and the environment, blah blah blah. Um, like, why well, there I, are places? I, like, you'd think you'd go somewhere like, uh, you know, a bit more higher and like a bit more obvious. Yeah, straight on, yeah. Like, look, straight on the White House front door, you know, and go, hey, pick your act up. <laughs> it's a thing, you know. Yeah. To me, that makes sense. So yeah, I'm sure they've yeah. got some reason. Well, it's it's funny. So I'm a real big uh, Stargate fan, right? And uh, like having followed UFO culture and all that uh, long before Stargate become a, became a thing. Um, when Stargate, we got to about season six, and I was watching it with my best mate. And uh, there were so many correlations between the show and uh, UFO politics and all that that I made a joke. I was like, oh, it's almost like there actually is a Stargate under under Cheyenne Mountain, you know, and, and this is like a documentary rather than a sci-fi show. And uh, it's like, you know, it's like Hollywood's like using it as mass desensitisation or plausible deniability and we were having a real big laugh at it. And about two weeks later, the next the next episode came out, and it was called Wormhole Extreme. And uh, it, that was it was basically about so this alien has has sought refuge on Earth, and he's been taking medication to make him forget that he's an alien. Um, but these memories have been sur- surfacing, and he thinks that they're just his imagination. So he's right. He writes this show. And it's like he calls it Wormhole Extreme, and it's basically a takeoff of Stargate. And uh, all the all the commanding officers at Stargate, you know, they're all like, "Oh, there's obviously a leak, and we've got to contain the leak." And the general's like, "No, we're just going to let it go." And uh, the Stargate team are like, "Oh, but why? Why? Obviously, there's a leak." And and one of them says, "Ah." Oh, Mass desensitization and plausible deniability. And me and my best mate just looked at each other going, What? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what that's what I sort of feel like needs to happen. Like, you know, mass des- desensitization. And I feel like uh, yeah. maybe like the Phoenix Lights could have been like a a jump to that, maybe, because um, that does uh, like thousands of people seen that over there. Yeah. But then, like, um, for me, I sort of feel like they sort of do need to go and do like a mass desensitization. Like, Put them in different locations, but at the same time, all across the world, so people can actually see them, and like in the mass populated yeah. areas. And so just, just so like people go, oh, something's weird happened here, and something's weird happened over here. Like, oh, there could be something relation. People might have a yeah. bit of a panic at the start there, and like, oh, what the hell's going on? But you mm. know, I think I think we'll do pretty well with. Well, everyone's probably going to buy, start buying milk, bread, and toilet paper, but that's probably about the worst of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? toilet paper apocalypse again. Yeah. I feel like that's probably going to be the worst of it, and people would be like, go back to their normal lives. Like, you know, the fact that the, the US government even admitted to their footage or some sort of acknowledgement that there is some sort of phenomenon out there that they don't understand that's going against the most powerful uh, military in the world, you know, something that's above them that they can't even comprehend or even can try and control. Um, yeah. Yet no one cared about the whole situation. They're like, oh, okay, cool. Something's out there that's weird, whether it could be Russia or China. But they even said it's not Russia or China as far as they're aware. So then who the hell yep. is it? And why is no one panicking then? Like, you know, there's something that's, that could easily blow us up if they wanted to. Yeah. So it's like, where's that panic? Yeah. So I also feel like, you know, if that is something that was some sort of massive uh, desensitization, I don't think many people would care. They just go against their lives and start watching TikToks on their phone again. Oh, yeah, cool. No worries. Yep, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's it. Even people who were getting who were getting interested in it, you know, with all the U.S. Senate hearings and all that, and then the minute the Chinese spy balloon stories came out, they were just all like, "Oh, it's just Chinese spy balloons." So, yeah, and it became the joke of the social media again. You know, like, I've seen yeah. it; it's like everywhere. And it's sort of form yep. of light now is Chinese balloons. Like, yeah, okay, cool, all right, the joke's yep. over. But yeah, right, come on, <laughs> let's get back to reality here. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's funny the world we are in. Um, so, like, was yes. that then the only experience you've had? Uh, no. So after that, uh, we saw a lot of the uh, the blue orbs, 
Um, yep. And that was that was funny too because they seemed to be playing with. Uh, so you know how I mentioned that these aircraft like. So there'd be That's multiple guess, yep. planes, a couple of helicopters that would like converge on 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 this blue orb, and just before they got there, it would just disappear and reappear on the opposite side of the sky. It was almost like it was playing with them. Uh, and my son and I saw saw those episodes like several times over over about six months. Um, we haven't seen any of the blue orbs since we've moved down to Port Kennedy, but. Um, Uh, yeah, it was it was it was pretty full on for a while there in, in near Fremantle. Yeah, fair enough. Um, other than that, no, it's only it's just been strange lights that you know might have been a plane or or something, but couldn't really tell. Yeah, any history um, in your family there regarding these seeing them them seeing something strange that they can't really identify? Uh no. Nothing, nothing like that. Uh, so one of one of the orbs that we saw in South Africa, I saw that with my mum. Um, yeah. But yeah, she just it really only tickled her fancy at the time while we were watching it. She didn't really think about it much after that. Yeah, fair enough. Which is uh, yeah, yeah, understandable. So, well, so on this whole topic, then, like, what are your thoughts on the whole situation? Like, what's the like, do you think they're aliens? Do you think they're some sort of dimensional being? Or could it be a multitude of things? What's your opinion on the whole topic? I think, I think, there's, I think there's a multitude of things. I think um, it's really hard to know where to draw the line on what's, what's bullshit and what's, you know, what's real. Um, but my best guess is that there's, there's multiple... Uh, extraterrestrial species that have been monitoring Earth for maybe going back thousands of years. I think there's an, a separate interdimensional element and I think there's also a, uh, a human ele element, you know, where they've, where they've used recovered technology or back-engineered something and, uh, you know, it's all above top secret type stuff. And so I think, I think a lot of the, confusion about everything is because there are multiple aspects to it and so it can be hard to identify you know what's ours what's theirs what's what's not even from this plane of existence what's from something else um i also find i find it interesting uh so some of the advances in science like with quantum physics and you know uh entanglement theory and stuff like that it it you can't really rule out the possibility of these things you know actually being from other planets or or uh, other solar systems um and even the interdimensional things it can't it can't be totally ruled out anymore do you know what i mean yeah absolutely because like if you look at the uh mix of the paranormal aspect like People are seeing ghosts or some sort of weird cryptids or something of that nature, and it's like, well, where do yeah. they come from? Like, they, are they part of this world? Like, are they are they roaming this world somewhere? Like, we only see a glimpse of them here and there. Like, they're doing a really good job at hiding. Um, yeah. Or are they some sort of dimensional being that can sort of travel between worlds or whatever you want to call them? But then also, yep. um, you know, there's the whole ghost spectrum, like. The, the dead, like you know, people seeing ghosts of like past family, or you know, something of that of a you know a spirit that's sort of sitting around still, like you know, it hasn't passed over. Well, however, we want to understand yeah. it. Like, where's that yep. all coming to this? You know, it's it's a yep. broad uh, subject, I know, but like, it's like, it try, but where's this all in, interconnected? So, yeah, it's a, it's yep. a confusing one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen some things and experienced some things that that have made me. Uh, I can't, I can't rule out that all that stuff is is real and exists. Do you know what I mean? Um, like my best friend that I grew up with in South Africa died in a car crash, and uh, two weeks later, my kid and I uh, we were walking our dog, and we had this kind of 
experience that I don't know if it was just grief induced or or whatever, but I decided I was going to get a Jack Russell and uh, and name it Jackie after my best friend. And uh, the clouds kind of parted, and uh, my Irish wolfhound, you know, did this weird thing like saying, "Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea" type thing. So we ended up getting this Jack Russell, and lo and behold, this dog has got my dead best friend's eyes. Wow. And, um, like, I was mind blown by this and uh, we had all this other stuff going on that made me think that maybe she hadn't just died in a car accident, maybe she'd been forced off the road and I was really suffering with guilt and I, I ended up going to see um, a psychic about this, right? And, uh, like, I've never been to a psychic before, didn't really believe in that stuff. and But I, I got there and... Um, this chick knew stuff that she should not have been able to know. Like I grew up in Africa with this kid and uh, I saw her again later in, you know, in my adulthood and uh, and this psychic person knew stuff, you know, that that nobody but me and my best friend knew. And, um, and then there's my dog that's got my dead best friend's eyes. And it's like... When I when I realised this, like I saw a photo and I was like, oh, my God, Jack has got Jackie's eyes. And I told my kids and they were like, oh, wow, mum's mum's lost the plot. Mum's gone crazy, you know. And I'm like, no, come and look at this. And I've, I've shown them the photos. And my my son, he ran out the room going, ah! <laughs> and my daughter was like, oh, okay, so mum's not crazy, you know. So, Yeah. I find it yeah, all wow. very fascinating. Oh, absolutely. Like, like reincarnation is definitely, like, it's been spoken about for thousands of years, you know, like, reincarnation. Yeah. Is, like, it's a strong possibility, like, whether, I don't know, if you want to say your dog was, became your best friend, you know, that's, that's a. Yeah. That's oh, a the way the psychic concept. explained it was that, was that it's part of her, like, my dog's part of her, not all of her. Like, yep. you know, there's high, we have higher selves or whatever. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it was, it was just weird. She, she, the stuff that she knew, you know, like, uh, when I, when I went back to Africa, uh, in my early twenties, um, I hooked up with Jackie and I took her to this really dangerous, we, we were at this nightclub and it was just near this beach that was, you know, quite dangerous. You don't go there alone, especially at night, uh, especially if you're a woman, and, uh, you know, we went over there to, to smoke a joint, right? And mm. this psychic chick, she was like, did you make Jackie smoke a funny cigarette in a really dangerous place? And I was just like, whoa, how could she know that? <laughs> Nobody knew that, you know? Like, yeah, it was pretty pretty mind-blowing. Yeah, and there's like stories on- I've heard. You're right. Yeah, she kept on saying she she was like, you know, uh, and I, I keep on tasting a really strong artificial banana flavor, and it was weird because when we were kids, like we'd get our bags of lollies, and I'd swap all the all her raspberry stuff for for my banana flavored stuff. She she liked banana flavored quick and stuff like that, and I was just like, whoa, <laughs> mind blown, wow. Yeah. yeah, I've always questioned the psychics like that and that sort of nature, like you. Like obviously there are some there are a lot there, of like, out there. That's yeah right. and but then when like if you go in there with nothing like they can't research you or anything, like took the you know social media insight you know <laughs> yep. then they start kind of stuff yep. like that no one else should know like you're saying like then you sort of like start questioning like what is going on like how can they connect into these worlds like how can they yeah. get this information and it, it just yep. opens up the world even more like oh well there's just shit everywhere that we don't understand it's like what is going on Yep. How can people be so naive and narrow-minded to go and look, this is our reality and this is it, that's all we've got. But yet you have all these yep. stories from people seeing UFOs, ghosts, having some sort of psychic abilities, being able to talk to the passed away relatives, you know? Yeah. Where's all this aspect to the nature of our lives? Where, like, why isn't this a an everyday thing? Why isn't this our reality? In that yeah. Sense? Well, because anybody who speaks it gets locked up. Or right, yeah. 
men in white coats. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I've said this before in previous podcasts, and I'm sure people are probably get sick of it. Like, I I hate the churches. I'm not much of a religious person. I'm not judging against religions. I don't care. That's your thing. You do what you want to do. But my biggest thing is like um, religion controlled a lot of the the narrative of the world to what it is today. Um, yeah. You know, over the centuries, there you know, they've gone back in medieval times where the Catholic Church has controlled um, most of the world. Really, uh, the Roman Empire is coming into it, and yeah. then it was against that religious nature. The you know you you got killed. Simple as that. Yep. Uh, yeah. So okay for for myself. So I believe that there's a higher power, right? Oh, but I'm. I'm also anti-religion, but as soon as you say to somebody that you believe in God, then you're like they label you as religious, and it's like, dude, I don't go to church. I freaking hate church, yeah. you know. Um, but that said, uh, so the Bible. Now I don't I don't read the Bible a lot, right? But um, my kids and I were going through some stuff, and we started doing this thing. We play Bible roulette. Uh, we'd sit on the bed together and I'd hold the Bible and I'd ask the kids, so what do you want to know? And they'd, they'd ask me a question and we'd, fo- we'd, you know, we'd focus on that question and, like, while I held the Bible and we'd put all this thought into it and then we'd open, the, open it up just on a random page and read the answer. And uh, we, we, ended up, we ended up stopping doing it because it was too mind-blowing. Like, okay. like they were asking something about, you know, uh, mom, how does mum always know, right? And uh, so we've asked the Bible, how, how does mum always know? And we open it up and it says, always listen to your mother. And the kids <laughs> are just like, what? You know? And, then, um, and we, had this, we had this Irish wolfhound, uh, her eyes, her eye shine used to change colour. And her personality used to change colour with her eye shine. And uh, whenever her eyes were orange, uh, she would, like, she would predict danger. Um, like she predicted a, ha- a house fire next door half an hour before it happened. Um, she predicted men on our roof, um, intruders in the backyard. It was like whenever her eyes were orange, it was always just a little bit before something, you know, scary or whatever happened. And they're like, oh, mum, ask the Bible about, about Maddie's eyes. So we, we've asked why does our dog's eyes, you know, why does her eye shine change when our other dogs, their eye shine doesn't change, it's always the same. And uh, we've thumbed the pages and opened it up. And uh, so I'm trying to quote word for word what I read. It said, he whose eyes uh, shine golden, not red like coals, but yellow like the sun. Uh, he be a kinship redeemer and a true prophet. And, like, we were just like, what the hell, right? And I've slammed the book shut. And, um, yeah, I, I spent I don't know how many hours trying to find that passage again. I've downloaded, um, I've, like I've downloaded, you know, Bible search tools where you can search various versions of the Bible and I've tried to, you know, find that passage again um, and I've never been able to find it. And, like, for a while after that we actually started taking photos of whatever we read so that I could, you know, prove, hey, this did actually happen because, yeah, not being able to find that verse, it's like, and the only reason that I know that I'm not crazy is because my kids were sitting right next to me and we all read the same thing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's all, it's all very weird, but, but you can't just dismiss it. You know, you can't dismiss it as a flight of fancy or, uh, a trauma induced hallucination or whatever. It's, um, I mean, some things you can, some things you can, but but some things they're just they're too too tangible, too uh, too relevant to to what's going on at the time and stuff like that to just dismiss it as nonsense. Absolutely, and that's the, that's the frustrating part. You know, some people are just like want to call you a crazy person. You're on drugs. You need to go on a loony bin or whatever. You know, and just question you oh, yeah. together. You know, yeah. but yeah, like you're saying, yeah. you know, there's there's too much stuff in the world that's happening. Like too much common ground of people's experiences their encounters to to dismiss it you know like 
as you say, like, uh, like, I'm, like I say, I'm, I don't believe in religions, but there is a higher being or some sort of spirit, like some sort of energy, like whether you want to call it like Mother Earth or the universe energy or something yeah. in that sort of spectrum. You know, it's it's confusing and strange yeah. and we can't understand it, but, you know, I, um, a lot of people call it like the higher self. You know, you are your own god in their own sense and you sort of yeah. have a, a control and you're your own universe to a, to a degree, but... yeah. It's it's sort of weird, like how you want to try and perceive it. You know, it's hard to understand in that sense. Yeah, I've no, like I've noticed there's something there's something about really strong emotions and uh, you know psychic kind of phenomenon. Um, like I've had a, an ongoing thing. Uh, where if I have uh, if I have recurring dreams about a certain person for a certain length of time, uh, I now know that I need to take note of that and contact that person. Because um, yeah, just mul- multiple times I've had recurring dreams about the same person, and then I end up contacting them, and they've been in distress um, or whatever. Uh, I had one friend, I had recurring dreams about her and I tried to get a hold of her and I couldn't find her. And uh, this went on for about six months and uh, I finally found an, a mutual friend and said, oh, hey, you know, do you know how I can get in contact with with Lani? And she's like, oh, I'm sorry to tell you, but she committed suicide a month ago. And it was like, yeah, that was like it was devastating for me because it had been like six months that I'd been dreaming about her and I felt this need to find her and check on her, see if she was okay. And and then like, you know, a month before I finally found out how to do that, she'd, she'd killed herself. Like, uh, yeah. so, so now I, I really take note when I have uh, recurring dreams. And it's been, it's been uncanny. Like I kept on... Um, so I had a, a coach in South Africa. I was a a, a really good high jumper. Uh, I made, um, you know, the state team and I was training for the Barcelona Olympics. And my coach, I just adored him. He was a real father figure to me. Um, and I was devastated when I left Africa because I had to leave him behind. And then and we wrote for many years, but then we lost contact. And then um, in about... 2015 I started dreaming about him all the time and and I was like oh why don't I just like look him up on Facebook and uh, I couldn't find him but I found his son and uh, yeah got in contact with him and Cecil had uh, just gone into hospital uh, for cancer and it was like just the timing was you know was uncanny I got to speak to him on the phone and stuff and you know he was really emotional and, uh, you know, oh, your call was the best painkillers that I've ever had and stuff like that. So I, I, do, be- I do believe that there's something, something that we don't understand with regards to, you know, psychic connections and, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I don't know, people say, like, your, your vibrations, you know, it's like your... Your frequency, your antenna, basically your frequencies and sort of stuff like yeah, like you know, it brings in different sort of uh, abilities, I suppose, or different connections and stuff like. That. And that's the one of those parts that you're trying. Like, oh no, that sounds like real. I don't know how would you? No, say, I know, I know it's, what you mean. Far fetched. And it can be hard too to discern. Like, so hang on, is this something that I need to take note of, or am you know, was that just a dream? Like I had, yeah. uh, uh, like I talked myself and my kids to lose a dream because we had uh, nightmares from trauma and stuff. So I taught us to lose a dream. And then, uh, and so now I have quite, quite often I, I, do you know Harry Morgan? He played General Potter in MASH. I think if that's who I'm thinking of, um, I think so. Just like an old guy. Anyway. Yeah, he, the old guy, the general. Yeah, I think I know who he is. Yep. So he plays God in my dreams, right? Okay. I have these fascinating conversations where he says these mind blowing things. Anyway, I was having a, a conversation with him and about something about, you know, he, he reckoned um, that the word 
profit needs to be changed to, you know, the, the, the term false profit has come to have negative connotations and uh, needs to be changed to the spelling of profit as in financial profit. And uh, oh, and by yeah. the way, you need to tell you need to tell Toby that his sister needs to go back to the neurosurgeon because her cancer is back. And it was like so. At three o'clock in the morning, I've woken up. Right, basically, God has just told me that my best friend's sister, the neurosurgeon, didn't get all of her brain tumor and need and she needs to go back. So in my panic, without thinking it through, I've just straight away messaged my mate, "Hey, Sam needs to get back to the neurosurgeon. Right, they didn't get all the cancer." And then I'm like, okay, job's done, gone back to sleep. And in the morning I woke up and I was like, oh, no, what have I done? Oh, I'm such a terrible person, you know. Like I had this dream and I've just like messaged him. He must be so, you know, worried and upset and I'm, I'm such a horrible friend. And uh, I didn't know what to do. I didn't contact him to apologise. I was just, I was mortified. I was so embarrassed and I was so ashamed, right. And... Uh, about a month later, I was I did this test online. You know how psychic are you? And I got I got that I was um, omniscient or something. And I was like, oh, that's funny. And I posted a screenshot on Facebook. And a second later, um, my my friend liked it, and I was like, and he doesn't usually interact on Facebook. And I was like, what the hell? Toby still is still talking to me, and I, so I messaged him. I was like, hey, Toby, how how are you going? How's Sam? I'm really sorry about that night. And he goes, no, it's all good, Kel. Uh, she's she's prepping for surgery for next week. Uh, you were right. They didn't get it all. And, uh, yeah, and, she, and, and I was just like, what? <laughs> what is going on? You know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's amazing like, how some people can have these abilities of, to be able to do this. Like, that's the biggest question like, I find confusing is, like, why do some people have these abilities but not? everyone has a sort of uh, interrelatable sort of connection, if that makes sense. Yeah. But, I mean, but but that it's also frustrating because there's been times in my life where a warning would have come in really handy, you know, for instance, yeah. to my children safe, and there's been nothing. There was just there was no no hint that, you know, I needed to be worried. Um, so, so it's... It can be frustrating as well. Yeah, or where's next week's lotto numbers? Like, come on, give us something helpful, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah it's, it's weird. Like, how do we, how does people have the ability to go and dive into that spectrum to be able to have some sort of weird information get sent to them on rare occasions for something that they don't understand? Like, it, it, and a lot of times, too, it's very um, cryptic information that you get. You have to go and pull yeah. puzzles together and go, well, what's this supposed to mean? Instead of going, yeah. hey, that guy over there is like you're saying, like, you know, that person over there has got a brain tumor. Like, that's an obvious, you know, hint. Like, you know, go and help them out. Give them, give them yeah. an idea, you know. It's like, why, why can't it all be like that? Yeah. Yeah. How, weird, come, how come, I, how come I, I was able to give Samantha a heads up about her brain tumor, but, you know, other people that have really meant a lot to me? I mean, Samantha wasn't even my friend. It was just her brother. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, but then there's been other people really close to me and there's been no no hint to me that they needed to go to an oncologist. You know what I mean? Yeah, or even, like, you know, like uh, someone who's just on the verge of, like, developing some sort of illness, you know, like where, where it could have been saved, you know, well, that, that sort of information is quite helpful to me, like, I, I feel. You go, hey, look, yeah. keep an eye on this spot here, you know, this spot right here, like you might be getting like stomach cancer or something like that, you know, get, get yep. scanned out, you might have some sort of abnormality there and go and get that checked out and, you you know, you'll be safe. <laughs> yep. Instead of going through all the pain and bullshit that, you know, cancer does. But, like, uh, yep. it's a weird and thing. The, and the method of delivery, I mean, who yeah. would believe? Oh, Harry Morgan told me in a dream. <laughs> That's right. I think, uh, I think a lot of people will choose Morgan Freeman to be their god, but, you know, <laughs> each their own. <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, look, it's, it's weird. The last time I dreamt about Harry Morgan, uh, I was I was sitting there talking to him, and the next thing, Barack Obama popped his head over my shoulder, and he said something so funny that I laughed 
so loudly that I woke myself up and freaked my dog out. Like my dog <laughs> jumped off the bed, right? And But do you think I can remember what he said? And I'm like, no. <laughs> oh, bugger. Yeah. It's weird. Um, it's a weird world. It's a weird environment. It's a weird concept in general. And you can sort of understand where people sort of, you know, throw the topic as taboo. But like yeah. I said, they, like this, these whole experiences in Canada's people like you have been dabbling in this spiritual sort of aspect of nature you know it's been around for thousands of years through different uh uh different sort of civilizations and stuff but you know yeah there's something to it there's more to it than what people sort of want to try and disregard it, and that's the hard thing of trying to get the reality out there yeah and i was oh you said like you know people are making two like instead of being a national profit they're making profit from it to Exactly. Like really believable, um, which sort of throws out the, the reality of this whole gifts that people have, which is horrible. I know, like, I know people want to, you know, get paid for their time and stuff like that, but yeah, what's when you start trying to make too much profit out of it? That's where things go wrong, and you get corrupted. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and I can understand where the whole spectrum of the, you know, being a psychic in that nature can be uh disregarded for that nature but then again yeah. like, you know you still look at the paranormal the cryptic the ufo side of topics in there and people are having these experiences they're they're not there for, out there for profit like yourself like you're not you don't gain anything from this you you had this strange encounter that you we can't really explain and yes you're not a crazy person you don't need to go into <laughs> the loony bin there you're not doing drugs you're not yeah, you know, no one is the people where you're hallucinating just for the sake of hallucinating of something, some illness or some sort of drug induced hallucination. You know, it's yeah, and, and I'm not saying that well, anyone, it, everyone, that even, if I, even if I was, you know, and there's this whole, uh, this whole mass hallucination phenomenon where multiple people will have the same hallucination. Like, how, how could my digital video camera share my hallucination? Exactly. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, which is uh, it's probably a good thing to like. You got that sort of bit of evidence there to help back you up. Like, it's nothing like to give that to find credible evidence to, but it's still something that's quite strange in the nature to go and give more credibility to your story. Yeah, exactly. At least I know I'm not crazy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And like, and like, the best thing too is like you got multiple different colors there that sort of throw a lot of confusion to what the object actually is. Whereas a lot of people say like, oh, I've seen this object, and it's usually just one little light. And it yeah. got the, the camera shutter speed, and they're trying to say, "Oh yeah, no, look, look, it's this is what I've seen." And it's like, "Well, look, your story can be credible, but what you're trying to show me is no credible evidence to sort of back up your story because there's nothing to really give that evidence to, yeah, you know, or the credibility to." You know, and it's not that we're trying to question what you've seen; uh, it's just more the fact that you know it can't give that more evidence to what you're trying to show, basically. Or what yeah, explaining if that makes sense. I think I'll muddled that up but i hope it made sense <laughs> i know what you mean i know what you mean yeah so yeah. um yeah look, look um look, before we finish up there is there anything else you want to sort of, like add to this whole thing at all any like any final words uh no not really just i'm very keen to see where it all goes yeah actually so where do you think we all go in that, in that sort of I, I was I was getting pretty excited about like official disclosure, but um, I can't see it happening anytime soon now. It seems to have you know backpedaled a bit. Yeah, which I, I sort of I'm on the same sort of path to like the whole Chinese UFO thing sort of threw us back tenfold. Whereas you yeah, know, the, you know the fact that we were getting disclosure through the uh, US Congress and that sort of stuff, and it was actually progressing. But yeah. Like, uh, I can't see it happening now. It's thrown us way back to square one, basically, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I think that's the case too. Yeah. Oh, look, um, if you've got nothing more to add, um, like, I'll, I guess we'll finish it there. And look, uh, all I can say is, like, thank you very much for coming on the show. It was absolutely wonderful having you on. Uh, no worries. Thank you. Oh, actually, I will make a recommendation. So I'm currently reading Arvi Loeb's uh, Extraterrestrial. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. It's really good. That's awesome. So, I'll, I'll, I'll throw, I'll, if I remember, I'll throw a link in the other 
thing of this so people can have a look at um, Abby Loeb's book. Um, yep. He's an incredible person. He's actually one of, probably the, the one top scientists there that's sort of trying to throw the disclosure out there, you know, which is yep. pretty good if um, yep. for those who don't know who Abby Loeb is. Um, yep. But, yeah, look, um, I think that's pretty much it. We'll um, go from there. And, um, yeah, look, thank you very much for coming on. It's absolutely wonderful having you on and sharing your experience there. It's absolutely fantastic. And hopefully we'll find some answers there of what this um, bloody thing is that you've seen. <laughs> you know, just want to get an idea of what we are looking at. So, um, yeah. Yeah, again, thank you very much for coming on. No worries. Thank you. And that will do it, folks, for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the show. And don't forget, if you or someone you know has had an encounter, but please get in touch with me to be featured on the podcast. If you are a fan of the show, you can support the podcast by purchasing some awesome merchandise that's available on our online store via the link provided in the episode description. So thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you on the next Encounter Down Under. Hooroo!